Hey guys, it's time for me to get caught up on my reviews. <laughs> So I just recorded my update video. I always do an update video and then a review video for people who like shorter content. And I think I forgot to mention um, that, uh, yes, this is a um, <laughs> background that I'm using with my green screen. Um, I'm attempting to show off some different parts of my home without having to move my stuff. So this is actually a room in my home. It's, it's our game room. Um, that is my, my couch. <laughs> um, that we have in the game room i am sitting in a chair so yes i know i'm not really creating a perfect illusion but that's okay so um as i stated in my quick update video i'm going to go through my reviews but i'm also going to be including a book that i read as an arc like back in may so that's what i'm going to start with so let me get my screen shared here All right, here we go. So, Paris Dreams, sometimes a new life comes at a cost. It happened in Paris, book one. Ended up giving this an overall star rating of four. And let's look at the review. It says, this is not my typical genre to read, women's fiction, but I'm very glad I read it. The author's talent for setting the scene and world building were the star of this experience for me. I've never been to Paris, but I've seen it in many movies, and some of those movies didn't make me feel like I was there the way this book did. It has incredible descriptions. So this is the story of a girl who runs away from her pain and crashes into a boy who could make her happy, but first he has to bring more pain. Um, I adored the main character from the start, but it took a while for me to care for the love interest just as much. Knowing the MC's past with men and control, I just couldn't trust this relationship up front, which turned out to be a good thing. The ups and downs of this relationship fuel this story. I like that both of the main characters are creatives trying to make it big in their perspective fills. In that way, I could never deny that they were quite compatible. Reading about the process and expression of art was much easier than understanding the fashion lingo but it was all so fascinating. I felt like I was given a crash course in how to be a fashion designer. Um, the part of the story that really stood out to me was the positive depiction of someone in emotional need seeking and getting the help they needed. I couldn't relate to all the issues these characters face, but self-esteem issues and anxiety are universal. I think the only thing this story was missing to take it over the top would have been a little more time spent in some of the, some of those therapy sessions and seeing more of the preparations for the race, fashion, and art shows. Disclaimer, I read a free digital arc of this book, which has in no way affected my review. Recommended to fans of women's fiction. I love how the ending was inspiring and hopeful without being a fairy tale happy ending. Highly recommended to fans of fashion, art, and all things Paris. All right, so that was um, Paris Dreams. I really enjoyed it. It's always good to try something different. Okay, next is Fey Realm. Ended up giving this, um, according to the stars, a four point, but it was my actual rating of 3.75. And let me just get into it. I like the cover of this book, by the way. I just wanted to mention that. So here we go. Um, actual rating 3.75. This book is not what I expected. It is pleasantly complex in a way that I'm not familiar with, and thus the rating. Others may view this book as refreshing and give it a higher rating. For me, this book inspires me to read more widely. I learned something when I wasn't expecting to. This collection of short stories is intertwined with many lessons on the folklore and creature mythologies featured in the stories. Some of the stories were too short for me. I wanted more content in the narrative to match the nonfiction lesson at the end. That said, I think this is a good I think this is a good compliment to the writer. While I never missed an opportunity to learn something, I think I would have enjoyed longer stories that incorporated the lessons into the narrative more. Still, I can't say that I didn't like the book. I did like it and I would definitely recommend it to someone 
who wants to learn more about fairy folklore and mythology, but I'm not sure how to recommend it. Should I recommend it? <sighs> to a fiction lover simply seeking some fairy fun. In any case, I'm looking forward to reading more from this author. I've even started following her podcast. Um, I love her voice. <laughs> recommended to curious and adventurous fans of folklore and mythology. So that is Feyrem. Um, I, I liked it. All right, what's next? Fast and Furious short fiction. I gave this collection of short stories an overall rating of four, which funny, this book is actually written by the by the same person who wrote the first book I read. I just realized that because I, I read that back in um, May. But these two last ones that I did were actually read in, um, I think, August. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so here we go. This was an enjoyable collection of short stories. These stories all seemed to have some aspect of a love story to them. Some were clearly romance, but others were more drama driven. Um, but they go beyond that. Each of these stories is a glimpse into something much greater, with some of the stories indicating what other books the characters can be found in. Even when that wasn't the case, the idea that the story was a small part of something greater shone through. I'm looking forward to seeking out the other books mentioned as well as hoping there will be more Fast and Furious short fiction from this author down the road. Recommend it to fans of short fiction and women's fiction. And so here's the one little thing that, that <laughs> helped me realize this connection, which I should have realized it sooner. There is a short story in this book that's actually connected to the other book. And so when I was reading this collection, I thought, oh, that's so cool that she wrote like a little side story from that other book. So if you liked that first review and you're this one, you might want to check this out too. All right, let's see what's next. The Restoration. All right. So this was one of my favorite authors. I'll just go ahead and say that. I don't remember exactly how I discovered this author, but I, ever since I started reading her, she's challenged me a lot. Um, there are certain genres that I just don't get into, but this author has gotten me to try some things. So this is actually a um, horror read. Let's get into it. I gave it a five star. All right. For someone who's not a huge fan of her horror, I have yet to be disappointed in this author's work. This was a scary good book. I could not read it at night, but looked forward to continuing it during the day. Much like the mother and daughter in this book, the daytime is the only reprieve from the torment that comes in the night. Part of me feels like the major unspoken theme of this story is the folly of pride. The characters, the monsters of this story only exist because other people let their pride keep them from seeing things for what they were and for not taking proper action at the right time. This is scary because anyone can fall victim to their own pride. In this case, pride allows monsters to grow and thrive. Um, there isn't a lot of gore and overly descriptive scenes of brutality but the gore and violence is felt in the atmosphere this, this author has created. While some scenes are played out in detail, subtlety is the most frightening aspect of the story. It's the difference between knowing something horrible has happened and seeing it happen, or perhaps imagining how it happened. Everything seems simple on the surface, but then you realize the characters in this story are trapped in their circumstances with few to no ways to escape. The ending is what really lingers with me well after putting the book down. I hope there will be more. I can't imagine being left with that kind of suffering, though it was an ideal end to a pretty messed up story, which is a compliment. Disclaimer, I read a free digital arc of this book, which has in no way affected my review. Highly recommended to fans of horror and ghost stories. So, um, I hope that review made sense. There were some kind of, you know, violent gory scenes, but it wasn't anything gratuitous. Those parts weren't the scariest parts of the book. <laughs> All right, let's see what's next. Casa Dark. Okay, so before I even get to it, this is an arc. Um, that book that I just reviewed, Restoration, will be coming out very soon. This book isn't coming out until like next year, 
but I'm going to go ahead and review it now because I'm just excited. So past the dark. Actual rating 4.5, as you can see, it's listed on Goodreads as a five star. I have been so excited to read this book since I heard it was in development and it did not let me down. The main reason I'm not considering this a true five star read is that I felt the pacing was a bit off a few times. It wasn't anything that took away from the enjoyment of the overall story, just a bit of a less than fast paced buildup and a few patches that let you catch your breath. Seeing how far this story and characters have come has been an incredible ride. After reading this book, I could definitely see there being more to the story, but would be satisfied if this were the end. But Basson, the son of two special heroes who've done their own part to save their worlds, is now all grown up and wondering if there's anything special about him. Beyond the fact that he too saved the world, the 11 races, as a young child. This story is a different kind of hero's journey. Basson has already been a savior and is now faced with whether that's all that he was meant to do. In this book, he faces a personal crisis, self-doubt, and is forced into dangerous situations that test his abilities and his own self-worth. Plus, many people's lives are on the line. Disclaimer, I read a free digital arc of this book, which has in no way affected my review. I enjoyed reading this book in the evening. It was an exciting yet relaxed way to wind down. Highly recommended to fans of space, space opera and military fiction. So I'm a few, huge fan of the series. I thought the series was over. I thought we weren't going to get any more of it. And I found out more was coming, signed up for the arc list, got it. I can't wait for it to actually be released next year. I need to talk about this with a whole bunch of people. Okay. Let's see. Next is Parallel. This is actually what I read in the month of September. I only read two months in the month of September. So the very first book I reviewed, I actually read that back in May. Um, it just came out. So that's why I'm doing review now. And then everything else I read was in August. So this is what I read in September. This was my one of the two IWSG book club reads, and this is actually an IWSG anthology. I gave it an overall star rating of four, so let's get into it. I enjoyed this collection. I felt connected to it due to my fami familiarity with the IWSG, but I could not have expected the stories within and all their diversity. I am not a sucker for happy endings and don't expect most stories to be bright and uplifting, but the dark tone of these stories caught me off guard, but in a good way. I say I enjoyed the collection, but not sure if that's the right word. Some stories I did enjoy, but others I felt more of an appreciation for since there was little joy in them. And so now I'm gonna break down the stories as best I can. So the first story, Felix was here, a great intro to the rest of the collection, 4.5. Rainers. Not, not zombies, not this world, not yet. Four, when a cautionary tale with hope in the end must love books. Five, ground zero, too close to home, beautifully written, still confused about the end. 3.75, the mirror people, a horror slash thriller entry fans of Dexter will appreciate. I'm a fan, five. Um, Everton, a cautionary tale with some disturbing undertones, um, but kind of humorous in the beginning. Trigger warning, there is blackface with respect. Um, I'm not going to go into detail there. It's worth checking out. Um, four, um, fold in life and death, interesting magic concept and alternate reality, a four. The 17, a thriller that is a cautionary and heartbreaking when people are dispensable, a five. Um, scrying the plane, um, one for the teens, sad but not uncommon even in a fictional future, 3.75. Haunted, sad, disturbing, haunting, sticks with you for a while, not for everyone, 4.5. Overall, I would recommend this to someone who enjoys science fiction, alternate realities, and thought-provoking concepts but not sure everyone will appreciate as much as I did. 
Still, I think it's worth reading at least once to decide whether you enjoy it or simply appreciate it for what it is. So I enjoyed it, um, but like I said, I'm not sure if enjoy is necessarily the right word. I got something out of all of the stories, even if it wasn't joy that I got, if that makes sense. Okay, so let's look at the last book. <laughs> the other book that I read in the month of September was another IWSG anthology, and, and that was for the book club. And I ended up giving this one a five-star rating, so let's see why. Another IWSG anthology I enjoyed. The talent of this group never ceases to amaze me. This collection is a great introduction to the mystery genre if someone is unfamiliar with it. There are many different kinds of mysteries all related to time in some way, plus other genres mashed in from time to time. All right, and now I'm going to break down the stories. The first story in the series, A Stitch in Crime, Optimistic Female and Ghost Detectives, Great intro to the collection, a five. Um, Gussie Saint in the case of the missing co-ed, a gritty noir tale, entertaining, 4.5. Um, the Tide Waits, seems like a folk tale, strong female lead, 4.5. The Little Girl in the ba Bayou, a thriller, um, tough subject matter, sticks with you, not for everyone, 4.5. Cypress like the tree, Cool, possible femme fatale, grumpy detective, dark but fun, 4.5. Reset, um, one for the tweens, time travel and fun, five. Three o'clock execution, do bad guys really always return to the crime scene or victim? Four. Uh, Center Lane, a cautionary tale about how messed up the justice system can be, a four. Um, one more minute, too close to home for many women. Good suspense, 4.5. Heartless, a good villain really can make the story. Incompetent cops are always funny, five. Until release, I think I may have missed part of the um, title on that one. Oh, well, um, excellent use of real time, dark yet relatable, Multiple POVs, a five. Let's see here. Highly recommend it to casual mystery fans who like other genres and fans of crime and war mysteries. So that is what I read in um, August and September, and even something that I read back in May. <laughs> and um, I'm going to try to not wait two months and have to get caught up again, but you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, what did you think of what I read? If you want to recommend something, go for it. But until next time, stay safe, guys.